Is coding dead in 2025? Well, maybe, but not in the way that you think. We are not far from a world, I think we'll be there in three to six months, where AI is writing 90% of the code. And then in 12 months, we may be in a world where AI is writing essentially all of the code. Programming is vital, but it's just different now. So we're gonna break up this video into five parts and explain exactly why coding, as we know it, is dead in 2025, but why programming is not. You, you, you probably recall, over the course of the last 10 years, 15 years, um, almost everybody who sits on a stage like this would tell you it is vital that your children learn computer science. Everybody should learn how to program. And in fact, it's almost exactly the opposite. It is our job to create computing technology such that nobody has to program. And that the programming language, it's human. Everybody in the world is now a programmer. A portion of this video has been sponsored by HubSpot. Okay, so let's first take a step back. When you first started to code, you probably ended up choosing a high-level language like Python, Java, or JavaScript, and then maybe even a framework like React or Spring Boot. But what you probably never had to do on the job was code in binary, or physically work with a bunch of servers and cables in the little room in the back of your office. Those were the OG software and hardware engineers. And kind of like how every generation before says, you never had to work as hard as our generation, it's somewhat true. Okay, no, we didn't have to painfully write things in binary or assembly, but we still have to work harder in other ways. We now have so much more information at our disposal that technology changes extremely quickly. You always have to think on your feet and there's never any job security. Likewise, coding in these high-level languages is kind of like the boomers of the past. You no longer have to spend hours on Stack Overflow to try to find the answer. In fact, you shouldn't because the next developer that comes along is just going to default to using Copilot and they'll be a lot faster and a lot more productive than you. Understanding this first is extremely important in understanding how to get get past the death of coding as we know it. Today we're talking about vibe coding, which is from a Andre Karpathy post that went viral recently. There's a new kind of coding I call vibe coding, where you fully give in to the vibes, embrace exponentials, and forget that the code even exists. So this is a clip from YC's main channel. They're talking about the newly coined term vibe coding. And I've heard many different terms for this, like the AI assisted developer, the no code software engineer, you name it. Vibe coding, as the video suggests, is just coding off of good vibes. Essentially, not really coding, but leaning very heavily on AI to code for you. But the truth is, people will always find a way to market software engineering as something easy to do. But if it was easy, then everyone would be doing it. The problem is, there are a lot of software engineers, but there are not a lot of decent software engineers. And the no-code approach doesn't mean no coding, it just means less thinking about code. A lot less. For example, if I wanted to build out functionality to hit an API that gave me basketball player stats for the past five years in the NBA, and then use that data to come up with March Madness picks, I would probably spend hours trying to build and deploy said API, cleaning the data, manually adding processing and ranking logic, and then displaying the info on the web page. But as a vibe coder, defaulting to AI-generated code is a lot faster. But here's the thing, you still need to understand what to do with the code. You can't just throw it into the void and hope that it works. You still have to understand what code is needed. You need tests that have good coverage, using optimal data structures and algorithms, utilizing solid principles, and understanding the dynamics of system design. I'm not saying that it hasn't become easier, but the skills required are just shifting. Okay, so leading on this whole no-code approach, I did mention that coding was dead, but programming was not. And by programming, I just mean building off of intricate software systems. This can include manually coding things, but it doesn't have to. I actually had a recent video where I talked about building AI agents without any code at all. The cool thing about AI agents are that they're not just LLMs that summarize things for you. They actually take action. In that video, I go through a demo of Operator by OpenAI, where it opens up a browser on the cloud, browses the web for grocery items to make apple pie, and then orders the groceries for me. And I set up an AI agent on my own within five minutes as well. You can actually check that video out here. This technology's limit is endless. You can use AI agents to automate entire workflows for you without having to do 
any code. This is the future of programming. It's evolved into maintaining and designing overarching systems in a clean way. This type of programming can get complicated. So if you want a free resource to learn more, I'd highly recommend checking out HubSpot's free AI agent playbook. This playbook goes over a breakdown of things like what AI agents are and how they work, how to get started with AI agents, and even some common pitfalls to watch out for. It also gives you a foundational understanding of the difference between an AI agent and any old AI chatbot. For example, as shown here, AI agents won't just summarize information for you. It'll actually do the thing. Here, the guide shows that if you wanted to find your top performing blog posts and draft social media updates for them, the AI agent would connect to an analytics API, analyze top posts, draft social media posts, and even schedule the posts for you. My favorite section is actually setting up an AI agent yourself. As important as the theory is behind it, it won't matter if you don't know how to create an AI agent yourself. This guide sets up a framework to follow so you can start creating these agents on your own. It even goes into detail about low precision versus high precision task frameworks and the common pitfalls that you should definitely avoid. At the very end, it even reflects on the relationship between AI and humans. This 40 page guide is filled with golden nuggets and it's completely free. I've linked the HubSpot guide in the description below, so you definitely want to check it out. Okay, now back to the video. So in the same video clip that I showed you earlier, Jensen talked about domain level expertise being on the rise. The countries, the people that understand how to solve a domain problem in digital biology or in education of young people or in manufacturing or in farming, those people who understand domain expertise now can utilize technology that is readily available to you. You now have a computer that will do what you tell it to do. But what exactly does that mean in the context of software engineering? He means having a deep, specialized knowledge in a particular field. And that's beyond just the technical skills required for coding. Now, it's not just knowing how to code, but also understanding context at a high level and knowing how to effectively apply AI within a new domain. For example, with healthcare, this looks like an engineer that understands medical terminology, workflows, patient privacy laws, and how doctors actually make decisions. This gives us the ability to focus our problem solving on using the code rather than creating the code in the best possible way, of course. Which, by the way, still means having an understanding of the code and the theory and how everything works. Problem solving has always been the foundation for software engineering. So this part hasn't actually changed. But if you treat it like a technology change, then it'll be a lot easier to adapt to this AI revolution, then learning new domains won't be hard either. In fact, it'll feel more creative as you get to explore the AI architecture side of systems and the domain that you're using these systems for. Do you remember working on a bug or a coding assignment and you just couldn't get one of the tests to run? You had to spend hours looking things up on Stack Overflow or Googling random examples that could maybe be applied to your work. This was honestly the most frustrating part of the process for me. You may know most of the coding fundamentals, but there's always something that you don't know. And so you end up relying too much on either the gold or the garbage of the internet. Because let's be honest, both exist. Now, I'm not saying that AI can't give you garbage code. It definitely can, and I've seen it happen a lot. But the cool thing is you don't have to put in the effort to manually search for things. So even if it gives you gold or garbage, you'll have to sift through that, but it'll just be a lot faster. And if you don't get what you want, it'll at least try to modify things or give you a template to jump off of. The old way of coding is definitely dead, but there is a new way to program the environment around you. And it just takes a new type of software engineer to do these things. And the sooner you adapt to these changes, the easier it'll be to level up your skills. It's a marathon at the end of the day, so don't get disheartened if you don't understand things or it doesn't come quickly for you. Just keep trying and pushing along and you'll eventually get it.